Hey guys, welcome to today's episode of Hawaii Knife and Gear. It is just a beautiful day here in paradise and I finally decided to sit down and spend some time getting caught up on some knife videos that I've been slacking on. I've gotten a lot of stuff in the last two weeks that I just haven't sat down and made a video on so I'm gonna dump them all on you today if you feel like sitting here and watching I got kind of a mixed bag of stuff but I'm gonna try and run through everything here so uh, I actually took the sleeves off the two sun boxes and I haven't even marked all these yet so they're gonna be just as much of a surprise to me as they are to you as I open them up here but I'm gonna start with uh, the smallest little piece that I've gotten this is actually a little piece of gear that I was completely impressed with what I received considering the price that I paid on eBay this thing is uh, about three and a quarter inches long this little sealed titanium tube try and get it off here one-handed so I forgot my tripod today and contained within are three titanium toothpicks very nice little knurled section up top for grip and they are pretty sharp point actually I don't know that I really like the feeling of metal on my teeth I was gonna try and polish them first and see if it was a little more user friendly but I mean even if you weren't to use them on your teeth just for general purpose stuff I mean I think I paid two dollars for this coming from China free shipping waited about a month for it to arrive and was pretty impressed I mean you know the stuff you can get from China for two dollars just really never ceases to amaze me so if you're interested in titanium toothpicks they're definitely available from China for a very very nice price came in a little waterproof titanium tube here and I just thought they were very cool I figured I'd share this with you and see what you guys think a little o-ring on the cap there and I mean two bucks you just can't go wrong so that's number one number two item that I wanted to show you this is a knife that I got off of eBay and I was actually pretty excited to order this but it was a pretty big letdown when it showed up this is a Kershaw Agile this is a Rick Hinder design it's got their speed safe assisted opening action to it and overall it's a neat little knife I mean I'm not personally one for small knives usually but it's not a bad little solid three finger grip with your pinky hanging off here but the whole idea behind this knife being called the Agile was that the backspacer here is removable it's got this see if I can get to focus there's a little Allen screw in there a little set screw and you can remove that and pull the backspacer out without taking the knife apart and the knife was supposed to come with three different backspacer setups this one which is the lanyard hole this is actually a little plastic backspacer just meant to hold a lanyard it also was supposed to come with one that had a screwdriver type end also with a lanyard hole and then one that stuck down and was a bottle opener when I got it it was missing those two backspacers so I contacted the seller he said he was sorry for the quality control issue blah 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 let me refund your money but I mean I kinda wanted the knife and thought it was a cool design but unfortunately I can't give you a complete review on it because the knife was not complete when I got it so I can only show you what I got here it does have a very very tight clip on this thing I don't even know that you could get this thing in your pocket to be honest with you without breaking it in a little bit I mean you're I'm pulling as hard as I can with my thumb and that's all I can get it just is rock solid little clip the frame lock on this guy kind of a little bit sharp edge here on the inside not not sharp physically sharp it just comes to a really acute edge there so when you go to disengage the frame lock kind of digs into your thumb a little bit so overall it's a budget knife I paid 20 bucks for this thing it's an 8 CR 13 MOV steel 
stone wash coating, stone wash finish rather, um, kind of a hollow grind to it, a little Warren Cliff style. Not a bad little knife, definitely budget friendly, you know, for 20 bucks. It's not going to be a high end custom refined knife, but not a bad little budget blade, you know, for people that like a smaller knife. So I was, I was happy to get it. It's, it's nice. I, I do like it. Pretty, pretty heavy little knife, actually. Let me show you the weight on this thing. I think that's probably my favorite part of it. For being as small as it is, this knife is still almost four ounces. So it's, it's got some weight to it. It's a kind of a stout little knife. For being small, it still feels substantial. Feels solid in your hand. So it came pretty sharp out of the box. Um, so it's got its pros and cons, but overall, it's about what you get for 20 bucks. So next on my list and to be honest with you this one was less than twenty dollars I think I paid seventeen dollars maybe for this one this is a Shurigov, Shigarov, uh clone of a Russian brand and you know I'm always down to check out clone style knives you just never know what you're gonna get sometimes and I've gotten quite a few really nice ones out of China so this one's actually no exception it's a Pretty solid little blade. Claims to be D2 steel, Chinese D2. It has very smooth action to it. It's very comfortable overall. I'd say the pocket clip is, you know, not the greatest design in the world, but it does go into your pocket easily because it kind of slides up here and has a nice little lip to it so you can put it in your pocket. It's got enough flex to it that it's, you know, easy to put in and out. Got a nice backspacer there with hidden lanyard spot there, which I don't know. I was considering taking a Dremel and kind of removing some of the material so you could actually access the lanyard hole a little easier. But you know, for 17, 18 bucks, whatever I paid for it, it's razor sharp. It's got pretty comfortable jimping here on the back of the blade. It's a nice flat grind very comfortable kind of rounded G10 handles to it with a stainless liner lock that uh, you know it's relatively comfortable to disengage you know not a not a bad little budget blade so I was pretty happy with this guy it actually came in a nicer box than any of the Tucson's do so can't complain so as far as a $18 budget clone knife you know, I brought it in to see what it was like, and I was happy with it for the price, so here you go. So, moving down the line, let's talk about some Tucson stuff that I've gotten here. So, what's behind door number one? We have, ah, TS-114, which I have shown the carbon fiber version of this on my channel already, but... I have gotten a couple of these in the orange G10 version. I think, in all honesty, I kind of like the way the G10 feels over the carbon fiber. It feels just a little bit more solid in your hand. It has a kind of a, you know, a nice solid pop to it when you open. This one has really strong detent to it. It's not that it opens difficult, but it just it has really good force coming out. I don't even know that you could fail this knife very easily. It just, it, it wants to open. As soon as you hit the flipper tab, it flies open. So I do like this one a lot. This has become one of the more popular Tucson blades. You can pick them up actually pretty cheap. These ones are, you know, going for around maybe 40 bucks. Um, so if you're into a larger size knife, liner lock, and you like that harpoon style blade, this is one of my favorites. I can't say I'm crazy about the color. I did actually dye one of them black using RIT dye, and it came out pretty dark. You know, I used a whole bottle of dye and left it in there for about 40 minutes, and I came out with a, a pretty nice, even dark black handle on this thing. And while it looks similar to the carbon fiber, it has a little bit better feel to it overall. So I was I was happy with the way it turned out. So I've gotten a couple of these, and figured I'd show this one to you. So TS114 Orange G10. Behind door number two, what do we got? Ah, this is the Night Morning Design TS-22 
Pathfinder. This is a knife that I had my eye on for the longest time. I mean, from from the very beginning of when I started getting Tucson stuff, I always saw this knife. I loved the way it looked. It was really on my wish list for a long time. And it was a little bit out of my price range, unfortunately. This one has been one of the higher priced ones for a long time. It, it wasn't one of those ones you could scoop up for 25 or 30 bucks. So I just it took me a long time to actually get it. When it finally came in, I gotta say I was a little underwhelmed. Not with the look of it and with the way it is designed, but the entire action of it is just not super comfortable. You can see where the, let's see if I can focus here, where the frame lock cutout is here. It's got kind of like this little serrated area for your thumb and it does not stick up at all. This is level across there. So one of my pet peeves, you, you got to dig for it. You got to work to, to hit it with your thumb there. And when you do finally get it slid all the way over, you can see it's, it's digging a little bit. And the other thing that I really didn't care for on this one was it had a pretty weak detent to it. This is a very easy knife to fail going open. You have to be pretty deliberate about the light switch style flick on this guy to get it to lock open all the way. Um, this is the third one that I've had. I keep trying to see if I can get a really good one, one that you know has a nice strong action. I actually took one of them apart and bent the lock bar over and it did help a little bit but you know overall I think the the detent on this knife should have been designed a little bit stronger for how big and heavy the blade is. I love the style of it. I love the the blue backspacer look to it with the lanyard hole, little kind of carbon fiber insert there. It's a nice looking knife, nice industrial look to it. But just, you know, I like a nice strong action and I like when it flies out deliberately and locks up solid. So this one is always, you know, while I like it, I just didn't love it. So. Moving down the line here, what else do we got? This is the TS50, also a night morning design. I believe this TS50 is the Tusk, and I probably blew it. I should have gotten this one when it was in production in titanium, but it was always on my wish list and I just never got around to it. But I did pick one up in G10, you can see it's got kind of the, the black and red G10 on it. And again, this is one that has pretty weak detent. It's got a pretty big blade. If you give it a full light switch flick, it does open and lock all the way. So there's nothing physically wrong with it. But again, this is a, a really fat liner lock style knife. It's, I mean, it's so fat it barely fits into their brown cardboard box here. It sticks up a little bit. So this is definitely one of the bigger, fatter handled knives that you can get. It fills your hand, it's pretty comfortable. But this one right out of the box actually had a few quality control issues, which was the first I've ever seen quality control wise from Tucson in close to 200 knives that I've gotten from. This one was the only one that had some issues to it. First thing I noticed, it was a little gritty when you would open it. It, it kind of sounded like there was sand stuck in the bearings and it just wasn't opening nice and smooth. So I figured I'd take it apart and kind of clean it up and oil it and the other thing that I noticed I couldn't understand what was going on but the backspacer stuck out past this cutout here and it took me a little while to realize what actually was going on with it but when I took the knife apart I realized that they had actually installed the backspacer upside down so this little cutout piece was actually sticking out up top here real simple fix you know I flipped it around and put it in the right spot but that was surprising. That was the first time I've gotten a, a Tucson knife that had any kind of quality control issue, really. So, I guess, you know, they're starting to crank out quite a few knives, and maybe it was made on a Monday or something, but, you know, I did turn it around. I got it oiled. I got, you know, I actually kind of bent the lock bar over on this one a little bit, so it does open up a little bit easier, even with just a, you know, a moderate light switch flick. It does lock open all the way. But the blade shape on this, I think, is pretty useful utilitarian design. It's a nice high flat grind so if you're breaking down boxes all day or you know any kind of slicing stuff this is a good blade shape. So I did like it 
This would make a nice beater work knife, I think. Uh, especially since these ones are going for about 35 bucks. It's a really good deal for $35. It's got titanium liners, titanium pocket clip, which I think of all the G10 knives that Tucson makes, most of them get that horrible steel clip to it with the sharp point at the end. Some of them they decide to do a titanium clip and those are about the only G10 ones that I will pick up. So I decided to get this one and check it out. And uh, again, it's not bad, it would make a nice beater. The price was right on it. This is, uh, give some dimensions on it. This one is just under eight inches. And weight on this guy is yeah, 3.14 ounces. So it's not a real heavy knife. It's, you know, it's a, it's a good size. It fills your hand pretty solid. So I see it could have its place, but I'm, after having this one, I'm definitely more interested now in seeing what the titanium version is like. So I'm still on the hunt for one. If anybody happens to have a TS-50 in titanium and they're trying to get rid of it, I have plenty I'd love to trade and hit me up in the comments, let me know. So, moving down the line here, what's behind door number four? We have a fantastic Wong design knife and this one's one of my favorites. This is actually the TS-124 and if you'll notice this little bump here and this little bump here. If you can imagine the female figure in that same space, yes, this is the same as the purple girl. Um, they actually both have the same model number, the TS-124. This is just the plain titanium sandblasted finish. That one is the girl version, but uh, again, it's a great knife. It's really super comfortable. I absolutely love what Wong is doing these days design-wise. They're just you know, it fits my style personally. He makes nice, big, full-size knives that good, workable blade shape. This one here is a full, it's actually over eight and a half inches. Weight on this guy is almost five ounces. So this to me is just a perfect size knife. This one really, it fits my style. And uh, this one is also done in the 12C27 Sandvik stainless, so hopefully a little bit better for Hawaii's climate. It's got a good clip to it. Frame sticks up so you can disengage easily. It's nice and rounded, just all the way around. This is a very refined design. It's smooth, it's comfortable. Fit and finish on it is awesome. This is one of the few knives, the, uh, the 12C27, they really hone these suckers sharp because this is one of the few Tucson's that you can take a hair and lay it across the blade and it will curl a hair. This one I, I definitely consider hair whittling sharp out of the box. It's a little hard for me to sit here and do it one handed, but uh, take my word for it. These guys are, are definitely finished very nicely. So for about 50 bucks on eBay, I highly recommend picking up a TS-124. They actually make this one in quite a few different styles and colors. You can get it in purple and green. I actually also have a bronze one, and then this is the plain titanium, but very good knife all the way around. Wong is just killing it with his designs. So, here we go. And I think the last one on my list here, I know what's here. This is one that I've had for a while, but I haven't actually made a video on it. This is also a Wong design. This is one of his earlier ones, but man, this is a cool looking knife. This is the TS-107. This one is definitely Wong stylings as well. It shares a lot of the same shape characteristics as the TS-81 and just a very, very cool looking knife. I've seen a couple people that have anodized these and made them look really nice. I actually really prefer the look of raw titanium. I've thought about anodizing it, but I just, I absolutely love the way that it looks right out of the box. You know, all the milling on the handle, it just is a very classy looking knife. Almost too nice to want to use. This is one of those ones that I personally don't think I could ever carry and beat on. It's, it's just too nice looking, but very, very stylish looking knife. This also is a pretty big sucker. This one is, you know, eight and three quarter all the way to the end of the lanyard hole. And weight wise on this guy, 5.27 ounces. So this is a hefty knife. It's big. I mean, you still have plenty of room to spare in the grip. I don't have huge hands, but I still got, you know, 
more than half an inch sticking out of the end of my hand. Very comfortable, really contoured in your hand, so I like this guy a lot. I figured I'd break it out today and uh, show it to you since this one has not been on camera yet, so. This one is in my keeper collection, so. Anyway, so those are the ones that I got for you today. Give you one last look at them here, just in case anybody was curious. TS-107, TS-124, TS-50, the TS-22, and the TS-114. So those are my two sun knives for the week here. Hopefully you guys got your fill and uh, thank you for all the support. Thank you to any new subscribers out there. Sorry I haven't made as many videos as I could these days. I just I get backed up doing other stuff and don't sit down and uh, I apologize for that but I'll try and keep them coming. I actually got a surprise in the mail today so there will be a new video coming. I've decided to branch out into a different brand besides Tucson so stay tuned for another knife of a different flavor coming real soon. But thank you guys. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.